The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Tennessee Titans 20 to 16. Kenny Pickett shows he has the clutch gene yet again. Dewey Porter Jr. puts the clamps on DeAndre Hopkins, and Broderick Jones proves he has to start every game moving forward. That and more here in the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. More on them later. Steelers fans, it's a victory Friday as your Pittsburgh Steelers have won. They beat the, the Tennessee Titans 20 to 16 at home. And yet again, Kenny Pickett shows that he has got what it takes to win in the fourth quarter. And man, I'm I'm running out of answers. I don't I, I, I don't got the answers as to how he keeps doing it. He now has six. Fourth quarter comebacks, I believe. No, no, excuse me. Yeah, six fourth quarter comebacks and seven game winning drives in his career. And I believe this was his 18th start. It's crazy. It is nuts. No, a 20 start. Excuse me. Either way, Kenny Pickett continues to show that he can make plays. And I don't get it because he's so bad. In the first three quarters. And it's not just this game. It's not just the Ravens game. It's not just the Rams. Game. It's it's just been who he's been since the Steelers have picked him up. I don't understand it. For example, in this game, first through the third quarter, he has 14 of 23 for 113 yards as a passer rating of 73.28. That would be like right below Ryan Tannehill and Zachary Wilson if that was his season-long pass rating, which also his season with pass rating isn't that great. It's like 80-something. It's like LeVert in the low 80s, which also is down there and, and pretty bad. But in the fourth quarter in this game, five five completions on seven attempts, 47 yards, a touchdown. That's a 129.17 passer rating. And again, this isn't a one-off. He's now done this all season. In the fourth quarter this whole season, he is 32 of 44 for 421 yards, two touchdowns, and interception. That is a pass rating of 108.2. Four of all quarterbacks who've thrown at least 15 passes in the end in the fourth quarter this season. That is the fourth best passer rating of any NFL quarterback in the fourth quarter. I mean, what is that? We're serious here. Like he's missing wide open passes to Deontay Johnson, five yard outs. The design easy, just get him the ball passes. He's sailing them into the stands, and it's just like what changes that he throws a 32 yard dime down the sideline right into his right into the bread basket of Deontay Johnson while he's well covered and being pinned to the sideline I don't understand it I mean it's getting to the point where if there were aliens that were coming to destroy earth and they had their death rate pointed at the earth from their mothership you don't call Will Smith and, and Jeff Goldblum you don't call the Avengers you call Kenny Pickett tell him it's the fourth quarter give him a football and say you have to throw it at that at that mothership to blow it up and he'd somehow find a way to do that too I know what you're thinking well Chris why can't he do it all the time and listen there are there's clearly becoming a divide in Steelers fandom and Steelers media and everybody about whether or not Kenny Pickett's a good quarterback or not. And the truth is, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm like, look, you can you acknowledge that he's great in the fourth quarter while acknowledging he's terrible in the others. Bad misses, bad reads. And there's several points in this game that that if he hits again, basic things. This game's this game's different. There was a, a third down pass to George Pickens. It was a crossing round, beautifully called play, wide open. If he hits, if he hits George Pickens, he's catching it. He's running. He might get thirty plus yards. Changes the whole game right then and there. Sails it, misses him entirely. Calvin Austin had a deep ball, had him open. Now this wasn't a simple pass because it was forty yards downfield. But if he just leads him, the defender doesn't get to catch up and break it up. It's a it's a touchdown. Calvin Austin had had him cooked. 
Johnson on the sideline, like I said, or the play on third down where he tried to fit it in low to Allen Robinson and the defender was all over it. He had Connor Hayward wide open in the end zone. It's not just accuracy. It's also seeing things. It's about execution. It's what I've been saying all along for everyone that says it's Matt Canada, it's Matt Canada, it's Matt Canada. Look, Matt Canada has some issues, right? But this is execution. This is bare basic things that you're asking Kenny Pickett to do. And if he does these basic things, this offense just becomes so much better. And if you hit just a few of those things, everything else starts to click. You even saw it on that for, on that first opening drive where they walk down the field and they score. He hit on a few passes here and there. And then all of a sudden the defense is like, who, what, who do we focus on? We can't just focus on Pickens because Deontay Johnson's eating on us. We can't just focus on Johnson because because Pickens will eat on us. We can't. And, and then all of a sudden, Najee Harris just runs in the end zone for 10 yards because they're too busy thinking about what the Steelers are going to do next. If Kenny Pickett does those basic things, that can be a more regular occurrence. Now, maybe some people are going to say, hey, they put Matt Canada on the sideline, which the Steelers did do, and that changed everything up. Maybe it helped the opening touchdown drive. We'll get to the run game part of this later. We'll talk about the offensive line because Broderick Jones started it. That's definitely a, a big part of that and needs to be a thing part, the moving part of it. But again, we'll get to that. I'm focusing on Kenny Pickett in, in, in this game. But again, like after that opening drive, you just get meh from Kenny Pickett for, the, for most of the game. And then all of a sudden he drops that bomb down the sideline to Deontay Johnson and everything starts clicking for him. And maybe the impact of Matt Canada being on the sideline did help Kenny Pickett and did help the entire offense kind of lock in because they did also have more scoring drives in this game, even though still it's only 20 points. You want more points than that, but you get two touchdown drives, two field goal drives and longer drives too in this, in this game to give your defense a breather. And I think that was also a big factor in the Steelers defense being able to hold on and keep and keep stay focused late because they weren't tired out in the fourth quarter. They had energy to go out there and make plays. But here was Kenny Pickett talking about one, the deep the deep ball to Deontay Johnson and how it was called, you know, it was called out of the it was called out of the huddle um that it was going there. Uh Deontay Johnson informs us, even though Kenny Pickett said it was called out of the huddle, it wasn't just that it was plainly called, it was a check that they had when they saw a certain coverage and they just knew that's where you wanted to go in that situation on that third down. But also here's, here's Kenny Pickett talking about that and the impact of having Canada on, on the sideline. Kenny, the uh, deep ball to Deontay down the sideline, what, what did you see and how did that play unfold? Was that the call from the huddle or did that change? No, that was a call from the huddle. Had man, um, had Tay on a go one-on-one. Uh, wanted to give an opportunity, a big third down for us to get down there in the red zone uh, and eventually you know, score. So it was a good, good play for us. Okay, what was it like having Matt on the sidelines to, to help it all? It was good. I think, you know, we communicate really well with the headset. No one else really gets a chance to do that with him. Um, so I think, you know, him being able to go over to each position group um, and kind of get on the same page with them and let them know what we're thinking going into each drive, I think it definitely was a positive. Kenny, how'd that come about? Did you request that? or? No, I didn't. I was just, you know, came to work and I was told that, so... Now, Deontay Johnson also went on, you know, when asked about that, said that the offense was just looking for a spark and that was something there. And hey, if that's the spark they need, that's the spark they need. Matt Canada looked fine on the sideline. Uh, he was very, he was very amped after that first touchdown. You could see him saying, let's go. And there was energy there. If that's what works, let him, you know, let him camp on the sideline. Give him, give him a tent. Let him, let him pitch the tent. Stay on the Steelers sideline every Sunday. Wait till the next game. They play the Packers in what ten days. Let him live on on the sideline until the next game, and that'll so solve that problem too. Point being, though, the Steelers did work different here, and I think part of it too is there there there's talent in this offense that has to be taken advantage of here, and part of it is acknowledged was also, you know, making you know opening things up for other people. Like I said, when Pickett started to hit guys in the on the opening drive, it opened up the run game because the defense couldn't focus on the run game and both Najee Harris and Jalen Warren were eating in this game and that really helped that. But also, the attention of George Pickens the Titans were doubling him most of the game and not just you know, putting two cornerbacks to watch him the whole time, but clearly when they put Pickens to one side of the field and they had, they had, they kept a safety over top of that side of the field to make sure the corner had, had help. It allowed, it allowed the Steelers to do other things. It allowed them to go after Deontay Johnson, allowed them to run the ball a little bit better because the Titans were so distracted. And that, that, is good offense in being able to take advantage of it. You want to take advantage of it more. You want to hit those more of those passes, but 
That is an example of what that does. And here was here was Kenny Pickett after the game talking about the impact of, of George Pickens just drawing so many double teams. What do you guys have to do to get George more involved in the offense? Uh, seemed seemed like I think he only had two catches for negative one yards. Yeah, you know, continue to move him around. Um, you know, he's got to get double a lot. And that's why you see Deontay get singled up. And, and Deontay's, you know, doing a great job on the other side. Um, you know, credit to him. He takes two guys. The run game's opening up because of him. Um, there's a lot of things that he's – not getting credit for right now in the stat sheet, but he's helping us win football games. He's helping us have a lot of successful plays. Um, so you definitely want to reward him. I wish we hit that one um, in the red zone on the fade, um, the slot fade, but um, you know, continue to try and get him the football as many ways as you can, but just definitely want to appreciate him for what he does in the defenses that opens up everything else. Just like some- Roger, yeah. And, and and good on Kenny Pickett for noting that, right? By like putting it out there, like, hey, he's doing a lot of things for us that maybe don't show up on the stat sheet. Now, George Pickens absolutely needs to get that toe tap on the ball in the red zone. That he catches that ball, it's a completely different game. But I think it like I think that's good of your quarterback to acknowledge that. But it's also a sign of that the Steelers do have a plan of how their balance can mess people up if they hit on those basic things. And you saw at least Kenny Pickett, and again in the fourth quarter, hit on some of those. And also in that opening drive, he he hit on those more. But again, this needs to expand. The Kenny Pickett and the offense, they have to be able to do this more than just the fourth quarter. That won't always get you wins in the NFL. But something else to note about this, and, and you know, there's times I'm, you know, if you watch if you watch me on here a lot, you listen to me on here a lot, you you follow me on Twitter at Carter Critiques, and you see my film studies when I point things out. There's Kenny Pickett, he misses opportunities, he doesn't see everything, but this is, I think, a very important note with all those misses and all those misreads and all the mistakes that he makes. You know, in his last six games, he has one interception. And in that way, he is not killing his team. Now, either that's part of the game plan and they're designing safe throws for him to just check through and they're just being very – maybe maybe there is something behind Matt Canada, Mike Tom, what they're trying to do to protect the football at all costs because they know if they can just not turn the ball over and they can uh, make – and they can score just enough that they can win football games right now while he continues to grow. Or maybe it means his decisions – are safer than we believe. And it's more so he's protecting the football before anything else. And if he's missing, he's missing in a way that won't cost his team. Now, I will also say Kenny Pickett has had some dumb luck with dropped interceptions and missed opportunities, but that comes with it. Patrick Mahomes has been, uh, quote-unquote, guilty with that over his time. And I'm not saying Kenny Pickett is Patrick Mahomes, but if you look back through his film of his early days, there were a lot of dropped interceptions in Patrick Mahomes' days. But, again, Kenny Pickett, there's no doubt he has a clutch gene, and that is huge for the Steelers. They just have to find to turn that clutch gene into an all-game gene. But let's talk about the defense because they were also very good, in particular, Joey Porter Jr. We'll talk about him on the other side of the break here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, as well as Broderick Jones and a whole lot of other factors in this Steelers went over the Tennessee Titans as the Steelers advanced to 5-3. and three. Stick with us here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. But first, we want to remind you this show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Right? Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. It's a simple way for you to for you to play every single week and not just the NFL, but the NBA, college football, NHL. Prize Picks is, is a simple game. You pick 2 to 6 players and if you guess correct on saying more or less on their stat projections that are provided by Prize Picks, you can win up to 25 times your money. On, on anything. And again, this goes across all sports with basketball season here. You can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league. It's a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, if you say LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three points made and, and, and uh, receptions combined, you can get, you can win money off of that in prize picks by saying more or less. And, and, and also prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports option out there that give that gives you an insurance policy with what they call their reboot policy. If one of your players gets injured in the first half of an NFL or a college football top 25 game and they don't return in the second half, that player is rebooted and it saves your prize picks. Again, prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports outlet that offers something like that. So get on your daily fantasy sports, get on prize picks, stop competing against thousands of sharks and uh sharks and, and people that are that are betting money to get to get lucky 
Go on prize picks right now, play that game, and you can win up to 25 times your money by simply saying more or less on projected stats. You're just trying to beat prize picks, not the whole pool. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. And again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our talk here about the Steelers. We can talk about the offense a lot more, and we will when we get to the offensive line. But I want to take a step back and talk about this defense because several things. There's things that we've known. The Steelers have the best edge rushing duo in the NFL. TJ Watt, uh, Alex Highsmith, they, may, they have the best edge rushing group in the NFL. Marcus Golden got a sack. He's been very good. Uh, TJ Watt got another sack. Also drew two holding calls. Could have drawn, tw- drawn 20 if the referees were really looking. Uh, Alex Highsmith gets two sacks in this game. I think he had a total of eight pressures. I saw a stat from ESPN that said that uh, Alex Highsmith's I think he now has four games with seven or more pressures in a game. And the only other person to have that in the NFL is Micah Parsons. So maybe Alex Highsmith should be getting some hype too in the defensive player of the year discussion. But the defensive player I want to really talk about right now is Joy Porter Jr. Because that kid is a stud. I want to I want to pull up this from New Gen Stats from the NFL. They said he covered... Hopkins, who DeAndre Hopkins, who is one of the best receivers in the NFL, just went off for three touchdowns last week. Everyone knows how good DeAndre Hopkins is. But he ran 36 routes in this game. 26 of those routes, Joey Porter Jr. covered him. And in those 26 routes, Joey Porter Jr. allowed him to make one catch for 17 yards. That's a shutdown. That's Joey Porter Jr. going to work. And the best part of all of this as Joy Porter Jr. revealed after the game, he asked to be able to cover DeAndre Hopkins. He went to the coaches. He asked him. He asked him all all week. He said they talked to him. They let they, they went back and forth. And it was like like when it was like Tuesday or Wednesday when they said, "All right, you're going you're going to get your shot, Rook." And man, did he deliver! And and Joy Porter Jr. in the locker room. There was a part where he was talking at the start of his at, at the start of his scrum, and he was talking about how he wanted DeAndre Hopkins. He wanted to prove that he could go up against a guy like that and and win. And man, that there's something to that. And I want to I, I, you know I, I want to point point out that is that that is the dog that they wanted to get. That's that's a little bit of Joy Porter Sr. in him. Talking, talking like that and delivering like that because that's the other thing. Joy Porter Jr. He would talk a good game, but he would back it up. Joey Porter Sr., I mean, Joey Porter Jr., he's talking a good game, and now he's backing it up. And, uh, you know, something that we talked to him about in, in the in the locker room, you know, I was asking around, you know, will, you know, in the, 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 the Steelers' defense, yet again, really great second-half adjustments. In the first half, Will Levis looked like he was on fire, and he was the next, he was the second coming. He was he in the first half. He was twelve of seventeen for one hundred and fifty three yards. Uh, you know, in in the first in the first half, that was a passer rating of 90, 98.41. He looked unstoppable. The Steelers' like secondary looked like it was a joke. Everything was terrible, and the Steelers were doomed. And then in the second half, they come out, and everyone's all of a sudden in the right places. Uh, Will Levis completed in the second half just ten of twenty two passes for one hundred nine yards, no touchdowns, and an interception. A passer rating in the second half of 41.67 also throughout the entire game the titans were three of 13 on third downs now what changed in the second half joey porter jr Quan alexander tj watt all confirmed biggest thing that was talked about was they needed to improve their communication and joey porter jr will talk about it right here in the clip about about right here about what led to that and part of it was demonte kz stepping up in in the absence of Minka fitzpatrick so listen to this but also at the end there Listen to how he acts. Uh, listen to how he responds when he's asked again about DeAndre Hopkins uh, covering him. Here's Joey Porter Jr. after the Steelers win in the locker room. Man, just be more vocal. You know, Meek's down, so we we had a lot of guys step up, and with Meek gone, the communication has to be perfect. KZ stepped up in a big way. Keanu stepped up in a big way. Oh my God! Like he said, (laughs) he always stepped up. He took a bigger step today. You mean he took an even bigger leap today and got us right? (laughs) I was trying to show love. That's that's not showing love. Man, KZ did great today. 
my boy Nunu did great today. It was perfect. Hawkins is a guy who's had a lot of success for a lot of years in the league. What was your mindset going in? How would you rate your I was just like, he got to see me. You know, that's the mindset I always have every week. It's not that I got to see these opponents. They got to see me. So uh, I just try to go in there with that chip on my shoulder and just give them that good work like I did today. He got to see me? They don't got, he don't, I don't got to see him. He got to see me. That's a dog. He wants the smoke. Ladies and gentlemen, the Steelers got one at the cornerback position. Listen, you carry yourself with that swagger. And listen, there's plenty more tests for Joey Porter Jr. I'm not saying that he's arrived and he's going to be the number one corner in the NFL. But that's the attitude that you want right there. That's what you want to see from Joey Porter Jr. And the performance, too. It's not just he's not just talking smack because, you know, because he feels good. about. It. He was out there covering and he's been doing this for weeks. We've broken down tape. We've talked about how he's been playing very well. I've been saying before he even got a chance to start, he needs to start because he's been playing very well. Man, Joey Porter Jr., he could, he could very well be that guy. But, again, more to his point, and you could hear in the background DeMonte KZ being like, hey, give me my love with Joey Porter Jr. That's a good sign of a good relationship that they're playing with each other like that. You saw similar things with Elan and Roberts and Quan Alexander when we were talking to Quan after, after the game. He had the game ceiling interception on, on that play. But um, one thing is very clear. There is there is chemistry in the secondary, even without its best player in Minka Fitzpatrick. And that is a good sign moving forward. And that's not to say that the secondary is perfect. Patrick Peterson still got some problems. Levi Wallace actually looked good on a fourth down time that, uh, play that they, they, they went after him. Um, but maybe there's more to this secondary than, than we thought. And maybe Joey Porter Jr. being on the other team's number one receiver more consistently is a big part of the answer because he put the clamps on DeAndre Hopkins. And man... If the Steelers got a shutdown corner for the for the next however many years Joey Porter Jr. is going to be in the NFL, look out because that's something that the Steelers have been missing, and it could be so huge for this franchise to find uh, moving forward. But it wasn't just Joey Porter Jr. The defense as a whole, I thought, played very well throughout this game. They held the the the, the Titans to 105 rushing yards. It's not dominant, but it's better than where they were. They've been at the bottom of the league. At one point, they were like next to last in the league. Now they're getting a little bit higher, but in their last two games, and against two talented running backs and Travis Etienne, who was eaten before they played him, they limited him to like 79 yards or so. Uh, Derrick Henry, he, you know, he's Derrick Henry. He's King Henry. Limited him in the 70s yards range. Did get a touchdown. But total, they've averaged only just 105.5 yards per game allowed on the ground in the last two games. That would put them ranked at 15th in the NFL if that was their season-long average. If they can maintain that, that's a good sign. You could see, you could feel it. That you could see they felt Cam Hayward's return, his presence in the middle was was certainly helping. Larry Ogunjobi played well, and man, Keanu Benton looks really strong. I really like what we're seeing out of him. And it's to the point where now DeMarvin Leal, he's coming off the bench and he's giving you really solid minutes off the bench. And it's it, now there's a rotation. And again, let's not forget about the linebackers. Now, Holcomb's injury looked really bad. Uh, you saw it was just a bad luck situation. He was running. Keanu Neal was trying to make a tackle. Keanu Neal's foot was in the air and it just, Brand, it just kind of slammed into Holcomb's knee and it bent it backwards while his foot was planted in, in the grass. And it, he just looked at so much pain. They brought a card out for him. Who knows how long that might be? That might be the whole season for Cole Holcomb. And that's a shame. And you hope that he's all right. But shout out to both Quan Alexander and Landon Roberts because they held it down at the linebacker position. They were bringing the hits at the line of scrimmage. They were flying in there. And Quan Alexander with the game ceiling interception, dropping back, making a play there. He has become the guy that Steelers needed in the middle of that defense. Uh, I mean, really, all three of them have been. Landon Roberts has been huge against the run. Cole Holcomb has been has very solid. And that's the thing that's so, that sucks so much about his injury is that the three of them as a tandem were becoming a real asset and were and are a real asset to this to the Steelers defense. So you hope that Cole Holcomb, you know, obviously he's going to be out for some time. You hope that maybe it's not too terrible and he can come back after he's put on IR or something like that. Um, but again, with the defense, not too much to be mad here about. You know, they had they gave up one drive early on where there was just lots of defensive flags and some of them I did not understand again. Um, 
but uh, you know, they, they did have one, uh, uh, you know, early on where they gave up some passes. Darius rush was out there. Patrick Peterson talked about how Darius rush impressed a lot of people with how quickly he was taking on the defense. And he made a couple mistakes here and there, but uh, he was very much part of that effort in the second half to limit what the, what the Titans were doing and shout out to Will Levis. I thought he was tough in this game and he made the mistake at the end of the game that lost, lost it for the Titans. But I thought you show you saw his big arm. You saw his ability to take a hit and keep moving. I think that the Steelers went up against a guy who had talent and were able to get the best of him, especially when they didn't have to beat live on the field all the time with the defense. But again, on the whole, I think the defense had a good showing in this game. And, uh, uh, I think at the you know, one the biggest thing I take away from the defense is that Joey Porter Jr. He shined bright and showing why they picked him in the second round and to be such a good pick from that Chase Claypool trade. But there was another rookie who shined pretty bright. And that was Broderick Jones. I'm going to talk about what he did for the offensive line, along with the entire offensive line with the Steelers game, because they were maybe the biggest factor as to why the offense got going in this game. We'll get to all that and more here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. We still got so much to discuss from the Steelers win over the Tennessee Titans. But first, we got to remind you, this show is brought to you by DoorDash. Why root for your favorite team on an empty stomach? You can order on DoorDash right now and save on your football watch party favorites, whether it's pizza, wings, soda, or, bur or burgers. Actually, I should say pop or burgers. We don't say soda in Pittsburgh. I apologize. That was in the copy here. Obviously not written by someone from Pittsburgh. It's pop. We don't say soda. Anyways. DoorDash can get you all the pop that you want with all, with your favorite order of your foods. Like personally in Pittsburgh, you can get pop with your with your Big Shot Bob's wings, and Big Shot Bob wings are amazing. You can get it with your Permani sandwich. You can get it with your Uncle Sam's. There's so many options that you can get delivered right to your door from DoorDash, or you can eat and order the ingredients that you want from any of your grocery stores delivered right to your door, so you can make the food that you want right at your right at your home. Either way. You got to get on DoorDash to get all of that. And if you download the DoorDash app today, you can get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCKED23. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-23. That's subject to change. Terms and conditions apply. And again, if you want more value, you can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with over with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. Get prepared before game day. Stock up on all your at favorite appetizers or, or and order all your tailgate gear and get ready for game day. And again, get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app today and enter code LOCKED23 into DoorDash subject to change terms and conditions apply. Back here in the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our talk here about the Steelers win over the Tennessee Titans. And I know I'm going to go over my time talking about this, so I apologize to those who may like just the 30-minute clips of the show. But we have so much to discuss. Broderick Jones made his second start in the NFL. He made a really good start against the Ravens. I gave him a two-star grade in our Stars and Skulls segment uh, for, for that game, and I was baffled that the Steelers benched him after that and i didn't understand it but then dan moore jr had a good game against the rams so i was like oh maybe there's something there and then the steelers offensive line collectively had the worst graded game i had for them all season against the jaguars and i was like broader jones gotta get in there and i wasn't sure if he would but then all of a sudden rumors pop up like like right before the game and they're like oh broader jones is gonna be playing right is gonna be playing right tackle and i'm like right tackle he's supposed to be playing left with uh, you know instead of dan moore jr but it was revealed after the game Chooks of four apparently was quote unquote acting out and doing things the coaches didn't like at the end of the Jaguars game. And that's, and he got benched because of it. And that's interesting because that's also now back to back games that Chooks of four has been, in, has been involved in something like that because at the end of the Rams game, after Kenny Pickett's quarterback sneak that, that, that sealed the game, Chooks of four was about to get into a fight with a Rams player before Najee Harris had to break it up and, and send him away. And the Steelers coaches, I guess, didn't like that with back-to-back -back games, you know, getting into something like that. So he got benched, Broderick Jones went in, and man, he looked good. 
He was blocking in the run game, blocking in the pass game. He was pulling into other spots. He was showing that athleticism. He was getting to the second level. He was being aggressive. He was doing all the things that you, that you wanted to see when, when we were watching him at Georgia. And we were saying, hey, if the Steelers can trade up and get that guy, he's going to be worth it. And I, I just I, he he passing grades. I'm gonna have to watch the all 22 to give me give you my full grade of it to see exactly what he did in all these different situations. But just from the naked eye, from sitting in the press box, from covering the game and talking to him after the game, I liked what Broderick Jones did. And this is now the second start he's had, and the second time I've stinks. I think he had a really good showing. But now you have to ask yourself the question because he was good at left tackle against the Ravens. And he was good at right tackle against the Titans. The Titans have a good defensive front. So it's not like they went up against just, you know, a bunch of clowns. So you got to ask yourself, where do you want him? Well, to me, the answer is this. Where's your biggest weakness? Because at this point, get you a guy that does both. I don't care who it is. Just start Broderick Jones. Chooks a core for Dan Moore Jr. Neither of them bring to the table what that guy has brought to the table in two games. And there's been days where Dan Moore Jr.'s had like a good showing, but not like this. He doesn't have that, that kind of promise. This is why we were saying Broderick Jones has got to be the guy. He's living up to it. And to me, the Steelers just got to figure it out. Is Dan Moore Jr. more of a liability or is Chooks a core for more, more of a liability? Whoever is the least problem. On the offensive line, the other guy needs to be replaced by Broderick Jones today. They have 10 days to figure it out with the long, with the mini, with the mini buy because they play Thursday night football. They play the Packers uh, two Sundays from now at home. This is the perfect chance to make Broderick Jones the starter and find that rhythm. And you know what? I know that Broderick Jones was, was drafted to be the left tackle in this team, but if they can block like this against the run, I am fine with him being at right tackle. And the and let's let's also be clear: the entire Steelers' offensive line stepped up in this game. It wasn't just him. Isaac Sayamala was blocking his butt off. Mason Cole was blocking his butt. James Daniel was going at. Dan Moore even was block, was blocking well. Harrison Warren, Najee Harris, and Jalen Warren had so much space to run. Najee Harris, sixteen carries, sixty nine yards, and a touchdown. Jalen Warren, eleven carries, eighty eight yards. Both were so good in this game. And you look at the and you look at those totals right there. Jalen Warren averaging eight yards per carry. Najee Harris averaging four point three. Together, the Steelers rushed for hundred and sixty six yards. I believe as that stands right there, I believe that is the that is the most that they've had in a game this year. I'm checking real quick to make sure I'm not talking out my butt there, but yeah, that's the most that, that they that they they've had all collectively on the ground this year. And again, that, that that's that, that's against a not bad run defense by the Titans. That's something to build on. That's more of what we were supposed that we were hearing what the Steelers' offense was supposed to be more bully ball that can balance this offense and force you to think about different things. And and here's the thing, we've we we've always heard when the Steelers are struggling. Some player says, oh, it's the same plays. It's the same plays. And, and everyone says, oh, Matt Canada, he just calls the same plays. He's so uninventive and things like that. Everybody calls the same plays. Everybody has repeat plays. Everyone goes back to plays. You, you, you know, everyone has these, these, these playbooks that work. That, but you know what makes the difference is when you have star players, when you have execution on offense on certain plays, the defense can't sit there and notice what plays are the same because they're too busy worrying about the play that they just got hit with. And that's, again, what happened on the first drive. The Steelers ran the ball a little bit, threw the ball a little bit, threw the ball different places. Defense is like, oh, okay, where are they going to go next? All of a sudden, Najee Harris is in the end zone. And that's part of what happens here. And the execution, if it's there, it brings the balance. It can be a big factor that gets this offense going and gives it the rhythm that it needs. And look, I think in this game, the combination of when they, when they lined up all together, James Daniels, Broderick Jones, Darnell Washington, they were a nasty run-blocking group on their right side. And they didn't always stick on the same side because sometimes one of them would pull and go the other way. But they were that was a nice trio, Darnell Washington, getting up in there, making some blocks. But here's the thing. I think if you put, say, put Broderick Jones next to Isaac Sayamala, you could do the same thing on the left side if you want to. <laughs> so 
Broderick Jones got to start. I, I, no ifs, ands, or buts. No more excuses. And this is Mike Tomlin. I, you know, I think I, you know, you guys know I have a lot of respect for Mike Tomlin. That's my biggest criticism of this year is how he is. It's taking him too long to start these guys. Now, who knows? Maybe him not starting Joey Porter Jr. right away has allowed him to develop into this guy that's playing so well. Maybe him not starting Broderick Jones right away has allowed him to start to in starts. You know, has allowed him to develop into playing so well in in these first couple starts. But they've proven themselves. Get him out there. Keep him out there. Let them go to work. You drafted these rookies for a reason. They're both guys who I'd rated as first round picks. Get them out there. Also, shout out to Darnell Washington. He now has two catches and two first downs. Maybe the Steelers need to throw to him more. And I'm not again. That's not a play calling thing because there's plays he's calling running routes and he's wide open. He's just not getting targeted. But hey, maybe Kenny Pickett. One thing at a time. He's he's developing things that he needs to see and getting the ball to the right spots. Eventually, maybe he'll work in. Darnell Washington, I just think that those could be some easy yards because he's the last thing that this that any defense is looking at when they're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. But again, I digress back to the point with the offensive line and the run game. If the Steelers can maintain strong offensive line play, pushing people off the ball, changing the line of scrimmage, giving space for Najee Harris and Jalen Warren to run, that's a Deadly one-two punch. Najee Harris always falling forward because he's not getting hit in the backfield. He's pushing the he's pushing the pile. Jalen Warren with his burst of speed can can be a, such a change of pace and the, that frustrates defenses because they're getting worn down by one and then and then beat up by the other. That can lead to such a big step in the right direction for this offense. And I know Pickett's misses are bad, but when you see all these other things. There's a place for this offense because things can start to get easier. Teams can't just focus on one thing the Steelers like to do. And then that balance can be the factor that gets Kenny Pickett going, lets him find more comfort in the offense. And that balance is the key that I think that Matt Canada has been trying to get this offense to unlock, that Kenny Pickett has been trying to figure out. And then if they get to it, I think they're getting closer to finding it. They can be a much more dangerous offense and a much more complete team. Because on the flip side, we just talked about the Steelers run defense is getting better. Joy Porter Jr. gives this team a shutdown corner, maybe, who can take guys out. Maybe Mika Fitzpatrick gets back. Cam Hayward's healthy. Alex Highsmith and TJ Water still bringing it. There's still a chance for this team to become a complete team. And maybe not a Super Bowl contender complete team, but you know what I mean by saying they can hit you with multiple ways. They can win with multiple ways. There's still a chance they can get there. And the cool thing about this is, is while they're still building to that, they're five and three. They're number two in the division. They're what, a game back, I believe, of the Ravens right now? You're right in the thick of things. And you're still growing. You're still getting better. And you get to play a Packers team that's been struggling. Granted, that does not mean I'm guaranteeing they beat the Packers because we all know that weird things happen when the Steelers play teams that they're supposed to beat. And it's not just the Steelers. It's the entire NFL. But you're in a position where if you do the right things, if you if you keep building forward, you, you could go into next week, have a strong performance. Don't let the offense make a whole bunch of mistakes. Let the defense do, do what it does. You can... You can fight, scrap, either your offense figures it out next week or at least you're still playing a similar way in mistake-free football. You win another game, and all of a sudden you're 6-3. and three. Then all of a sudden you're going the road against the Cleveland Browns team that has that you've already beaten, and then you could be staring 7-3 and three in the face before you play the Bengals. But one thing at a time, the Steelers' offense – a little bit better. They got to keep taking those steps forward. They got to keep, they got to, they got to, Kenny Pickett has to be more consistent and then just the fourth quarter. And the run game, the offensive line has to play more like it did in this game than it did in the Jaguars game. And Broderick Jones has to start to be part of that equation. Those two things happen by themselves. I think the Steelers team is much more competitive than most people gave it credit for. But we have a lot of time to talk about that next week because the Steelers, they get to take the weekend off. Steelers fan, you can order some of that DoorDash right to your house, by the way, and and not stress eat it on Sunday while you watch 
your football games. Watch everyone else stress out because you know that your team has a victory Friday. And this has been the Victory Friday episode here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, post gazettecom And find me on the Locked On Steelers podcast Monday through Friday with sometimes with bonus episodes where we break things down here on your favorite podcasting network or podcasting app or uh, or on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel to get all of all of those daily episodes. Thanks again for tuning in, everybody. We'll have, we'll have more to break down. I'm going to try to get my stars and skulls grades done by Monday since this is a Thursday game. If we don't, we'll definitely have it for Tuesday. But, uh, you know, I got to cover some co- some college football on Saturday. There'll be a lot of things to break down there as, there as well. Uh, but we'll do our best so that Monday we can do grades. If Monday's not grades, Tuesday will be grades with stars and skulls. But either way, we'll be trying to get you get you the, get you uh, my reviews on how the Steelers played across the board and who had the best performances in this last game. But either way, we hope that all Steelers fans out there have a happy weekend. Enjoy not stressing out about your team and enjoy your team being five and three. Yeah, sure. None of the wins have been pretty, but the fact that this team is finding a clutch gene, it's not just Kenny Pickett. These other guys are also making big plays late defense and offense. The fact that they're finding ways to win like this, if they can build, this is a young team and young teams are the ones that are most likely to build. This team can take itself, some, itself some serious places. They're building the foundation. Let's see how they keep building. Thanks again for tuning into the Locked On Steelers podcast. Have a great weekend, Steeler Nation. We'll see you back here on the Monday episode of the Locked On Steelers podcast. 